I have a bachelor in biology from the University of Aarhus, um, which I've never used. But I've been uh, playing the violin since I was five years old. While I was doing the bachelor in biology, I felt more like being a musician. And then I went into the conservatory of the Academy of Music and uh, studied there for, for five years. I'm a violinist doing a lot of teaching, playing concerts, mm -hmm. conducting orchestras, um, doing speeches about music and musical management. Mm. Lots of different stuff, but most of it has to do with music wow. uh, in my everyday life. And that's just great. But I think if I should define myself, I'm more of a sailor than I'm a musician. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever bring your violin to the boat? Do you ever you know, bring no. your music life to your sailing no. life? Or no, it's, it's two lives that are completely separated. First of all, it's impossible to play in this small boat. The boat will hit the, the roof. If I try to play in here, it's impossible. <laughs> but, um, but when I'm sailing, I'm sailing. Yeah. I'm doing nothing else but sailing. And that's actually what I really love about sailing that it's possible to forget everything else. Yeah. I'm doing nothing but keeping the voyage moving. Provisioning, cooking, washing dishes, reading pilots, uh, studying the charts, uh, tidying up, mm -hmm. um, fixing broken items mm -hmm. all the time, exploring uh, the surroundings when in port, preparing everything for the next two or three days, the next two or three weeks. I'm absorbed doing that. There's no time for reading and seldom read when I'm cruising. There's no time for watching movies. Actually, no time to think at all. Wow. I'm just working all the time. And that's a kind of a, a Zen meditation, yeah. or what you might call it. I'm absorbed just being. I'm just, again, a function. I'm just doing what is necessary to do, so we don't have to, to deal with complicated issues. And I'm dealing with very complicated issues for the rest of the year. <laughs> with, with colleagues, uh, with students, with uh, friends, family, my wife, my, everyone I know. It's very complicated when people get into your life right. and it gets complicated immediately <laughs> to me. Not to everyone I know, but to me it is. Here it's very simple. Just repairing, studying pilots and charts, yeah. do what's necessary to make this boat move. That makes sense to me and I'm happy doing it. What are all the places that you've sailed to? Yeah, I have had the boat for eight years. And um, for the first couple of years, uh, I always sailed to Sweden because it's these it's 22 hours or so from Aarhus. Then you're in paradise. It's a cruising ground, per perfect. It's perfect for cruising. So beautiful, almost always nice weather. And it's very, very, very different from Denmark. So you feel this 22 hours voyage crossing Kattegat, then you, you could as well be on the other side of the planet. So I really like going there. And I sailed there alone for some years, and I sailed there alone, and then the family came up with a ferry to Gothenburg, and then we sailed around together, and they they uh, took the ferry back home again. So uh, I've been in Sweden for quite a, quite a few times. Actually, uh, there was a summer where I sailed there twice, the same summer, I sailed there alone, <laughs> sailed back again. Uh, and the family got aboard, and we sailed there together, and we uh, sailed back again. So back and forth of yeah. Kattegat. So it's a lot of Sweden. And then I've been on the Shetland Islands alone, uh, the three week, three week cruise, all on my own to the Shetland Islands. Five years ago, and then last summer we circumnavigated England. I had expected, when we got uh, back home from the circumnavigation of England, that I would be fulfilled now. Now I, now I had did the, the, the great voyage. Now I didn't have to do something very special this year. We could just go to Sweden again, or just cruise a bit in Denmark and quiet and easy. And 
but when we when we got to about Christmas time, I felt the, the my nerves began to <laughs> so, yeah uh, oh no no I have to go have to go again to the high seas again. I just felt the necessity of getting out again. I was so lucky that my wife um, accepted the idea of going to the Faroes, and then we did the trip to here. Me moving the boat, and they going here by plane. So, so Sweden and the Shetland Islands, and then Scotland, Northern Ireland, Ireland, Cornwall, Brittany, Normandy, the Netherlands, Germany, back to Denmark, wow. and then Norway and Faroes. Um, so that's the places where I've been with this boat so far. And again, thinking, cruising, pocket size. There are lots of other possibilities. There's the west coast of Norway, mm -hmm. there's the Baltic, there's Poland, Russia. Yeah. Um, Do you plan to sail to Russia? I don't plan to, but I dream of yeah. doing it someday. Mm. It's on my list. <laughs> Have you ever crewed on other boats? No. No. Never. No. Actually, oh, never. Oh. Have you ever brought on crew? Before? No. No. Yeah. Neither. I've sailed like a very few day sails with friends, yeah. and it's been delightful every time. Especially people that haven't sailed before. Mm. I like to to open this universe of of, uh, of joy yes. to them, to feel the amazement. By people that that haven't tried it before, that wow, whoa, it moves! And, <laughs> oh, this is great! <laughs> I really like that. But uh, no, I've never crewed. I don't feel like doing that. I don't know why, but I I, I just think that I just feel that that I have to be in charge. Mm -hmm. I, I have to be in, in command of things. Mm -hmm. I want to be the skipper. And responsible. And yeah, responsibility. responsibility. Yeah, I I don't like to to leave the responsibility with someone else. Yeah. It's not a matter of, of a lack of trust. Mm -hmm. It's just that I love the responsibility. Mm -hmm. I really like to feel the responsibility. It gives me a kind of kick to have the responsibility for my wife and my beloved children on this voyage around England, which is very, very difficult um, to navigate around some of the most difficult waters in the world actually to navigate in really? uh, around England. Met lots of, of sailors who have sailed around the world that have told me that if you can circumnavigate England you can sail everywhere in the world because it's it's actually very complicated <laughs> and it's um, potentially dangerous waters. I'm never afraid but I like to feel the danger yeah. because it makes me alert. I feel awakened in a way, um, very present in the moment, and I like the responsibility. So uh, I don't think I think it would be giving the joy to someone else if I crewed a boat. I want to be the skipper. I don't want to decide for other people what they should do or giving orders. I don't like that at all. But I like the responsibility that it's here. How did you choose this boat? Ever? I did a lot of research, of course, of what boat to, to choose. I chose the boat, of course, the, the reason why most people choose their boat, because I could afford it. Mm -hmm. It was very important to me that it was so cheap, so to speak, that I could also afford to equip it and upgrade it mm -hmm. to the voyages I wanted to make. A lot of sailors do the, the mistake of buying a very big boat, a very expensive boat, with all the possibilities they think they have with this big boat, and then they can't go anywhere because they miss all the equipment, all the upgrades that makes voyages possible. So I chose the boat um, because, also because I knew of the existence of the boat. It's, it's quite well known in Denmark. It's a Danish-built fiberglass fin keel boat mm -hmm. from uh, the mid-70s, 76. 1976. Yeah, so it's an old boat. But 
you can't tell if you just see it. It's a good a good shape. Um, very very nice design. It's famous in Denmark for its yeah. its nice sailing capabilities. Huh? It's um, it's very spacious inside compared to its uh, limited waterline length mm -hmm. of 26 feet, and it's a tough boat. It goes very well in, in heavy weather too. That was very important to me, because. But when I bought it, I didn't have the the the, the plan of sailing the Faroe Islands around England. Yeah. These plans and dreams arose uh, later on. But uh, I wanted a boat that could sail in in most weather conditions. And I think it's a pretty beautiful boat. She's yeah, yeah, I think so. I made one mistake though when I chose the boat. This boat, uh, it was in excellent condition, and that was why I chose it. But the equipment consisted of one compass. That was it. That was it. Uh. No GPS, no VHF, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. There was one compass aboard. So, and I will never do that again. Hmm. Because <laughs> everything that's in the boat now, equipped, where she's equipped for long voyages, she could circumnavigate the world tomorrow if that was the case. Any upgrades, all equipment, I, I have had to fit myself, buy myself and and um, modify myself. Uh, it's, it's custom made. Of course it's been a, a great pleasure to do it, but it's taken a huge amount of time and I've invested one and a half time the price, the original price of the boat, yeah. upgrading her. Aye. So, so actually, it's it's uh, ridiculous. It would be a lot easier to buy a boat that actually had circumnavigated the world and had all the equipment installed. But I know all the equipment. I know all the systems aboard. I can I can fix them all because I made them myself, mm -hmm. and that's of course a, a great advantage when you're traveling on the high seas, far from civilization, far from spare parts and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tools and stuff like that. So that's that's great. I upgraded her for the first time when we decided to go to Sweden. Mm -hmm. For the first time, because I think a VHF radio and a life raft was nice to have crossing Kattegat, even if it's a very small sea. And then I upgraded her second time when I get, I would li I like to go to the Shetland Islands. Mm -hmm. Actually, I spent one and a half year upgrading her to heavy weather, to, um, especially that, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, difficult anchorages and stuff like that. And then I thought now the boat is finished. I have done everything I can. She can cross an ocean in heavy seas and uh, heavy weather and all that kind of stuff. But then we decided to sail around England. And then my wife looked in the cabin and said, okay, how should we live here? Two adults, two children. Uh, actually, three adults some of the time because she had a, a grown-up son uh, of 18 years that joined us for four months. So we were three adults and two children aboard this 26 wow. feeter on a long voyage. <laughs> How should that be possible? Yeah. Okay, you're right. She can sail in, in heavy weather. Um, and she got all the navigational equipment and stuff like that, but it's not very practical um, for, for arranged for inside. People. So. We spent the whole winter rearranging a lot of things in the cabin, mainly to make it comfortable to live here. Right. Lots of people in a very limited space. Right. Then I thought, okay, now she's finished, I have nothing more to do on this boat. Then I decided to go to the Faroes. <laughs> I think, okay, the Faroes, it's even farther, further in, out into the big ocean. I will get west of the Shetland Islands, I will go out in the North Atlantic unstable weather conditions, probably huge swell and seas, and yeah. um, I might experience a gale, yeah. if I'm unlucky, even a storm, yeah. because you can't predict that well um, out there. So I, I decided to upgrade her even more <laughs> for heavy weather. So I, I have um, strengthened the rigging, mm -hmm. I've uh, mounted chain plates and uh, bought a serious stroke um, for extreme yeah. weather conditions uh, and lots of other things. So I spent the entire winter again <laughs> upgrading her. So she's been upgraded three times. This costed a 
very lot of money. I, I don't want to know how many, uh, and hours and hours and hours of work. Sure. But I think now she's finished. So <laughs> nothing more to do, I think. <laughs> I hope it's possible now to cruise as far as you want four people for a very long period in all weather conditions with an actually very cheap, old, very small boat. And I think that's amazing. I have this invention of my own and probably it won't make much sense to most people, but I have this uh, freedom equation. That's what I do to, to, to judge what to do to achieve the most freedom in my life. Uh, and I think, especially when it comes to, to cruising and sailing, it's very, very worth considering before you go and buy anything at all. My freedom equation is that freedom equals the opportunities you get minus the time spent on getting these opportunities minus the time earning the money mm. to uh, getting these opportunities. So the more you have to work to obtain the opportunities, the more you have to work to earn money mm -hmm. to obtain the opportunities, the less freedom you have. Say you buy a very big boat, lots of opportunities. But there's a lot of work to, to maintain a big boat mm. and there's an even more work to do earning the money to buy the boat, maintain the boat, paying the insurance bill yeah. and everything else. So you end up with a very big boat, big opportunities, but you have to spend so much time having this big boat and your freedom will equal to zero actually. Wow. It might, it might. And I see lots of sailors that are in this, in this situation. So I prefer to get as much opportunities as possible, limiting the time of work you have to do, limiting even more the time of work you have to do, earning the money for the project. And that's why I'm some of the reasons that I'm very fond of small, a small and cheap boat, yeah. because you get a lot of freedom. What you don't get, perhaps, is comfort. Of course it's more comfortable with a big boat, you can stand up, you can. You have lots of stowage space, um, and it's very comfortable. You have perhaps a shower and a toilet and um, widescreen television and uh, stuff like that. That's comfort. You can't get everything. But for me, freedom is the most important. And with this small, cheap boat, upgraded and modified to get opportunities, first of all. Opportunities of traveling there, traveling there, opportunities to live aboard here. Um, then I get very much freedom. Um, because I don't have to spend, for instance, the whole summer earning money. Yeah. I, can, no, I can say, no, I don't need to earn money for these six or seven weeks. Yeah. I can go cruising instead. Yeah. Because my boat hasn't cost half a million, but only 200,000 Danish crowns. So that's my freedom equation. And every time I consider doing something, oh, every time I see a bigger boat, mm -hmm. I think, oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, it would be nice to have such a big, wonderful boat, beautiful boat, strong boat, heavy gear. Great, I would like that. Then you just stop, put it into the freedom equation. <laughs> how, mu how much money do you actually earn? Mass, I ask myself. How much money do you, do you need to spend having this big boat. Yeah. Okay, how much time is left actually sailing this big boat? Yeah. Is it a good idea? And the answer is always no. You're so I stick to this one. Yeah. <laughs> and you're maximizing your freedom. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm stuffing this boat with freedom. <laughs> <laughs> In a way. Okay. By making all these improvements, all these inventions to make it possible also to be four people aboard, also to sail in a storm, also to cook and also to bake a bread, also to make it possible, even if it's actually not possible from the beginning because the boat is very small. It's compromising on, on comfort, mm -hmm. but not compromising with freedom. And that's, that's my philosophy. If you can live with a, a, just a bit less comfort, you can invent lots, lots of things, and I will show you. But it actually makes it quite comfortable to be in a small boat. But of course not as comfortable as in a big boat. But if you can live with that, 
you will experience a lot more flexibility, a lot more freedom yeah. in your sailing and cruising life, I think. Do you have a blog or a website? Yeah, I have. I have a website for this boat and I write quite a lot of my voyages and my experiences also about my upgrades and uh, what I'm doing on the boat yeah. and I do it mainly to inspire all sailors to uh, think a bit different yeah. about their sailing because I think most sailors easily get stuck on the idea of sailing they look around in the marina and say okay how do you sail here okay you buy a, a big new boat, uh, very, comf very comfortable with the um, shower and widescreen and all this stuff. And then you sail from harbor to harbor in Denmark, small day sails, and uh, you have a nice time barbecuing um, at night mm. in the evening. And that's great. It's just great. But I very much like if I could inspire these sailors, some of them, to be a bit more adventurous and expand their horizon in the head for a beginning and in reality afterwards. Um, and to be able to do that, they have to, to uh, see that it's actually possible to expand the, the limits and to explore and go places where people usually don't go, the Faroe Islands, for instance, or around England. Um, it's possible and it's not very expensive and it's amazing and that's what I that, that's what I want to 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 give writing my my blog and I write it also in order to give something back yes. because I think I've learned so much yes. uh, and I would never had gone on these voyages I would never have the experiences wonderful experience that I have had as a sailor if I hadn't read books written by other sailors that had done it before me, if I hadn't read other blogs of sailors doing something like what I'm doing, or even more extreme, watching uh, YouTube channels with sailing stuff like you do, all this kind of inspiring um, thing that, uh, okay, it's possible. He did it, he did it, he did it, they did it, she did it. Okay, why shouldn't I do it? <laughs> Sounds great. So, I would I, I like I would like to to give something back to share what what I feel is is um, is awesome to do, and to tell how I do it and how simple it actually is, and how cheap it is. You've been inspired by others, and now through your website, you're sort of paying it forward. Yeah, yeah. That's my intention. That's why I write the blog. Yeah. 